Good morning. Sunday, the people of Kosovo declared their independence. They have asked the United States for diplomatic recognition. And yesterday, the United States formally recognized Kosovo as a sovereign and independent nation. In its declaration of independence, Kosovo committed itself to the highest standards of democracy, including freedom and tolerance and justice for citizens of all ethnic backgrounds. You hear this bullshit they be talking? Every day, man, it's like these motherfuckers is just like professional liars, you know what I'm saying? They were not necessarily just attacking Serb police. They were killing civilian Albanians who did not support uh, independence. Uh, they may have supported the government or they may have supported Mr. Rugova's pacifist faction. They also were terrorizing the other ethnic minorities of Kosovo, the, the Gypsies, the Turks, the Gorani, Slavic Muslims, and others. They did this before the war, during the NATO air war, and they've been doing it again since the air war, nonstop. It is clear that no matter who was in government, the nature of this terrorist war conducted by the KLA was guaranteed to generate a strong police reaction. We just aggravate the situation. What did we do? We did exactly the opposite in, in Yugoslavia. We bombed Serbia in order for Kosovo to become independent. Now the Russians are doing the same thing, and then we're on the opposite side. It's this total inconsistency, absolute interference when we should not be there, and we don't have any money to do this, and we don't even have any troops. If we, we really needed our troops to go into Georgia, we didn't even have them available, which proves my point that we are undermining our national defense with the foreign policy that we have. Pat Buchanan, the well-known American political commentator and writer, thank you for inviting us into your home here. The United States attacked Iraq, a country which did not threaten us, did not want war with us, did not attack us, in order to take away from it weapons it did not have. Everybody knows that now. People know that Israel bombed Lebanon for 35 days because of a border incident in which two Israeli soldiers were killed and two were captured in far greater violence than the Russians did in South Ossetia and Georgia. Now, Americans know this. They know we bombed Serbia for 78 days when Serbia had not attacked us, and it was attempting to recapture and redraw in the province that it was losing of Kosovo. So I think if the American people are told these facts, they will understand. Unfortunately, uh, it's all very much, the media is all very much of the moment. They look at the television screen, they say, what happened today? Russian tanks rolled into this little country, little democratic country that's a friend of ours. And that's all they know, and that's all they see, and they're not very well informed. The roots of the conflict in Kosovo. Now, this is all about independence, and it's been that way for right. decades. Why is it okay for Kosovo to declare <laughs> unilateral independence? <laughs> That's just it. And not okay for Abkhazia and South Ossetia. And there is no consistency in the American position to support the, the separation, independence of Kosovo, and then recognize it as an independent nation when Kosovo is the cradle province of Serbia. And it was pointed out to the Americans when we did that that this could affect South Ossetia and it could affect Abkhazia. And you notice the Spanish, for example, who were concerned about the Basque country, about its right to secede. Mm -hmm. uh, they were concerned about not recognizing Kosovo. So there is clearly an inconsistency in the American position. I don't deny it. These people live in Bosnia and also want to break away, like Kosovo. We have more reasons to declare independence in Kosovo. Albanians are just an ethnic minority in Serbia, while Serbs living in Bosnia constitute a whole republic. Just a couple of years ago, it would have been almost impossible to say such things here. The situation is changing due to Russia's support. Bosnia is occupied by Western forces now. The West say they're friends, but they bond us here and in Serbia. They've stolen Kosovo from us, and I'm against it. I won't accept any foreign soldiers in my country, except Russians. The troubles for Serbs in this area started in 1991, when the Republic of Yugoslavia fell apart and Bosnia proclaimed independence. In turn, Serbs living in Bosnia created their own government. That led to almost four years of war, which ended in 1995 with the Dayton Peace Accord. Eventually, Bosnia was divided into the Serb Republic and the Muslim Croat Federation. Even children are helping out. 
everyone realizes there is the tangible chance for a better future. Just believe me, according to statistics, 98 out of 100 people here support the idea of a referendum and wish for a united state of Serbs, which would be the most stable state in the region. Gostimir Popovich believes that whether it takes one, ten or a hundred years, the Serb Republic will eventually join Serbia. It's just a matter of time. NATO, the USA and the European Union say that Kosovo's independence won't be a precedent for other disputed territories in the world. However, the mood of Serbs living in Bosnia suggests that the chain reaction has started already. Now the only question is, who will claim their independence next? Naida Azizova, Russia Today, from Banja Luka, Serb Republic. And Serbia is keeping expectations high. I mean, our expectation is that the court is going to say that the UDI was actually not in line with international law. And that as such, um, Kosovo, the self-declared Republic of Kosovo, will not be able to join international institutions and that there will be no more recognitions, especially after the court says what we expect that the court is going to say. However, it is too soon for either side to celebrate a diplomatic victory, as this issue may have seen the end of the beginning, but not the beginning of the end. Fighting is approaching full-fledged war. American charges of Russian aggression ring hollow. Georgia started this fight. Russia finished it. Will you elaborate on that for us? Well, certainly the... The war, this mini-war, was started on the night of August 7th, August 8th, when Georgia launched artillery barrages on the capital of South Ossetia. But Georgia started the war. Saakashvili started the war. There's no doubt about that. Another article uh, on the situation in the Caucasus, which is for a dozen years, Putin and co. have watched as U.S. agents have helped to dump over regimes in Ukraine and Georgia that were friends to Moscow. Now, is that an implication that the U.S., uh, in one way or another, handpicked Saakashvili or President Yushchenko of Ukraine? Poland, uh, I believe on Monday, signed one of the final documents. Do you think this was a reaction to what happened? I think it was a Polish reaction to what happened. And you also saw something else the Poles got as a result of the Georgia incident. They're now getting American Patriot anti-aircraft missiles. Which America wasn't ready to agree on. America wasn't happened. ready to agree on. They're going to be manned by Americans. Mm -hmm. Now, this to me is a mistake. Politicians, just people. Mm -hmm. And Europeans, uh, when they hear a comment from George Bush uh, condemning Russia, or any other country for that matter, about uh, any kind of invasion mm -hmm. of another country. <laughs> As, as John McCain in the 20th century said, in the 21st century, nations do not invade other nations. I think even Dick Cheney was laughing at that one. Georgia's stability is really important to the U.S. for one reason, and that's oil. For the, the, the issue is, is that there's a pipeline that goes from Azerbaijan through to Turkey, and it goes through Georgia something like uh, more than 1% of the world more than 1% of the world's oil supply goes through Georgia that means it doesn't the US doesn't have to depend on Russia and Iran but Georgia's a really strategically critical place and with uh, the situation with the oil markets today it becomes more and more important here you know you are in the heart of the Basque region Basque cuisine flags and language, an ancient language older than Anglo-Saxon or Latin. Not officially recognized in France by the state, the majority of the Basque population are calling for their linguistic rights to be recognized. Abat Sali means equal rights regarding the language and the right to call ourselves the Basque in the global community and to be entitled to decide our future by ourselves. In my opinion, separation is not the main point. A call for independence has seen in the southern Basque region over 800 deaths at the hands of the armed Basque separatist group ETA. The organization's political wing, banned in Spain, 
is legal in France. Here is where the real battle for independence from France is being waged. It's a refuge for political exiles from across the border and from the French authorities who've pledged to help Spain clamp down against ETA following the end of a ceasefire in June 2007. The fight for the culture and language of the Basque country will never stop. This man says he's been in trouble with the police for separatist activities and was unwilling to show his face on camera. Why do we want to separate? Because of the police repressions. We protect our language, we protect our land and our culture. Our rights are seven provinces and it's necessary that they unite. One history, one culture, one language, but very different divided opinions on how to defend it. On the one hand, there are those who are prepared to commit violence to achieve full independence. They just want to receive the rights that they are due. So two different ends of the spectrum, but both prepared to achieve their aims.